Praise Lord Church. We welcome you to our online service. It's such a joy to come together as a family and worship our Lord. Amen. Come on, close your eyes from wherever you are and lift up your hands and tell him, Lord, I need you. I've come here to worship you, God. More than anything, Lord, I need you. You are my king. And I worship you, God. We adore you. All our adoration belongs to you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just tell him. Lord, I need you. More than anything, Lord. More than the air I breathe. I come here to confess that you are my king. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. church the number one priority for our heart is to know him more the one thing in our heart the thirst in our heart must be Jesus he is all we ever want church thank you Lord that today God we acknowledge ourselves and remind ourselves Lord that we need you in everything that we do thank you Lord help us to grow even more in you God we give everything into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Wow.
your feet we find peace it is at your feet lord we find healing it is at your feet lord it is at your feet we find comfort thank you jesus it is at your feet lord we are secured we are loved thank you jesus oh thank you lord we've come down to your feet lord knowing that you are our king everything revolves around your throne god everything else just disappears thank you lord thank you jesus oh hallelujah come on church this is the time to get closer to him come on lift up your hands just let's seek seek his face let's look down to him tell him lord at your feet at your feet lord it is at your feet i find everything here at your feet here at your feet i lay this day down my 
wanderings All my mistakes down and I am free Here at your feet I lay this day down Not in my strength But in yours I found stay for all of our lives that's where we find our strength that's where we find our peace that's where we find our love God thank you that you love us thank you Jesus at this moment God we know that you are glorified in the heavens as praise erupt from this place you are glorified Thank you, Lord. We come and bow down at your feet. We lay our crowns down and tell God, you are my king. Take control over our lives. Thank you, Jesus. We believe that you are working all things together for our good. Thank you, Lord. As we wait for your word, God, speak to us. Mold us, Lord. Prepare our hearts for the greater days. Thank you, Jesus. We give everything into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. 2022 is indeed the year of the Holy Spirit mega shift in each of our lives. God is a good God. He is a faithful God. And He is true to His promises. I'm excited to invite you to this service today. Because God is going to speak to you in a different way. A fresh word from heaven is waiting for you. So if this is the first time you're joining us online, there's a number on your screen. And if you text hello to the number, we will send you our devotional blogs and video clippings to keep you encouraged all through the week. And if you're ever in Bangalore, give us a visit. We have 11 a.m. English service at church. It's going to be amazing, full of the presence of God. And uh, you'll be able to receive a fresh word from heaven. 
and i'm excited about today's service because of course you're already wondering why this new setup because i want to introduce you to this guest preacher she's a good woman of god who has a word in season so take your notes out open your bible it's going to be amazing god is going to speak to you and at the end of the service i will meet you again so are you ready for the word let's get into the message praise the lord church what a joy and honor it is to come in the midst of you and bring the word so it is an absolute joy to come to you again and meet you through this online service. So shall we all close our eyes and begin with a prayer. Lord, we thank you today. Lord, thank you for this amazing Sunday. Lord, we keep you in the center. We keep you ahead. Lord, speak to us through your word. Build us, bind us together, Lord. We give it all into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, Today, I'm going to bring to you a very, very simple word of God, but I'm pretty sure that's going to change our lives forever. You know, sometimes we have this feeling, is there anybody to think about me? You know, there are times, lonely times, there are times frustrating, there are times, you know, you are left alone. You, we kind of tend to feel emotional and we tend to feel, is there anybody at all to think of me? Is there anybody to even feel for me? You know, sometimes we also think, I wish my son thought about me before taking this decision. I wish my daughter thought about me before leaving the house. I wish my mom had thought about me before taking that decision. I really wish my dad thought about me before leaving the home. And I wish my, my brother thought about me, my sisters thought about me. And you know, sometimes there are, there are times that we think, I wish my wife understands and thinks about me sometimes. And my husband, you know, he could think of me when he's at work and just give me a call or just text me once in a while. I really wish he thinks. And sometimes when you're going through lonely times, we always tend to feel, I really, really wish someone thought of me. I really, really wish someone thought of me. You know, someone who betrayed, we think, I wish that person just thought of me and the pain and agony that I would go through because of this. You know, all these pains are real, my friend. I am not denying it. This feeling, this emotion is true. We all come across this. You're not alone. I'm not alone in this. We all come across this painful times of thinking. Is there anybody to think about me? Sometimes we also tend to decide there is absolutely nobody to think about me. But my friend, today I'm here to tell you the truth. You know, the very fact that the, the, the word that says there is nobody to think about me is a lie from the devil and the devil is a liar. But the word of God is true. And let's just rely upon the word of God and let's see what the psalmist have to say. The psalmist says in Psalm 139, verse, from verse 13 till 18. Let's just go there and read the verse. You know, I will read the verse from 13 for you. He says, Lord, for you formed my inward parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret... And skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance. And in your book were all written the days that were ordained for me when as yet there was not one of them. Listen to this, my friend. David says, how precious are your thoughts to me. Oh Lord, I'll read that to you again. He says, how precious also are your thoughts to me, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would outnumber the sand. Yes, the psalmist says, you know, you, how precious are your thoughts for me. You know, I want to tell you the story of David. We all know the story of David, but just a small reminder. You know, when we read the story of David, we know this. When Samuel comes to anoint a king from the house of Jesse, from one of the sons of Jesse, Samuel asks Jesse, 
Jesse, could you call all your sons? I want to just see them. I'm here to anoint one of them to be the king over Israel. And Samuel, uh, Jesse calls for his sons, all of his sons, leaving one, come forth. And, and the Lord rejects them all one by one. And Samuel asks, uh, Jesse, are these all your sons? And Jesse says, um, you know, prophet, I have one son. You know, he's the younger, youngest of all. He's, he must be rearing sheep somewhere. Um, you know, and then Samuel says, go send forth for him. I need to meet that lad. And Jesse sends forth for his son, calls forth for his son, and David comes. With this story, can we all imagine the agony David must have gone through? In the entire story of David, we cannot see the mention, the situation where David's mother would have spoken to David, which means probably David's mother was not there. She could have possibly been passed away. And imagine that young lad is forgotten by his dad. You know, that is so painful. Being forgotten by his own dad is so painful, don't you think? And then his brothers are very, no, not very fond of him. That we can know from the Goliath story. Eliab is like belittling David, saying, where did you leave your little sheep? Why are you here? Why are you getting into all these stuff? Which means his brother is like belittling David in front of his brothers. So I kind of imagine, I would invite you to imagine with me, imagine this young lad rearing sheep somewhere and thinking, Will my, did my mother ever think of me? Will my dad ever think of me? Will my brothers ever think of me and be fond of me? You know, the agony, the pain, and, uh, and, and, and the longing that David, have had, David would have had for his dad and for his brothers. You know, that young lad with all his emotions, being lonely with the sheep, talking to God, writing his Psalms. But you know, this is where I believe David writes about God and he says, let's go back to that Psalm. And I want to read it. I am so excited to read this with you. He says with all of these thoughts, will my dad ever think of me? Will my brothers ever think of me? With all of this... Come back to the psalm and let's just read it again. He says, Lord, for you formed me, for you formed my inward parts. You know, David says, Lord, my dad might not think of me. My brothers might not think of me. But Lord, this I know that you, Lord, were with me when my inward parts were still being made. I believe this couldn't have just being written with David with his human mind. I believe that he was anointed when he wrote this because he is speaking things even before he was formed, even before he was made, even before one can think of what could have happened to them. You know, practically we all know the children don't remember anything until they're three years. Their memory is actually after they are three. But David is going back to where he was formed, like from a cell, multiplying into cells and coming to become a baby. Let's read it again. He says, Lord, you formed my inward parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. He says, Lord, you were with me. And when, when you were just knitting me down in my mother's womb, Lord, you were there with me. And he says, Lord, I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret. And verse 16, he says, your eyes have seen my unformed substance. And in your books were all written the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not one of them. He says, Lord, you have a book for me and you have written all those days, days of mine even before I was, you know, living those days. He says, Lord, even before I started living my days, even before I was born, you had this book written for me and all my days were ordained for me. You know, if you ever thought, will ever, will anybody ever think of me? My friend, today I'm here to tell you, the Lord 
is thinking of you. And he has a book. If he had maintained one for David, I believe he has a book maintained for you and me individually. And he has written every day of ours. And not to condemn us, but he has good stuff. You know why? Why am I so confident in saying that? The very next verse. Let's go to the next verse. He says, Lord, how precious, how precious. Come on, say that after me. How precious, how precious. He says, how precious also are your thoughts to me, oh God. How vast is the sum of them all. You know, David goes to say, Lord, even if my dad doesn't think of me, even if my brothers don't think of me, Lord, this I know that you are thinking of me and your thoughts are very, very precious. You have precious thoughts of me. My friend, today, this is exactly what we need to know. This is exactly what God wants us to know. God wants us to know that he's got precious thoughts for us. Would you receive that for me in Jesus' name? God has precious thoughts for each one of us. Precious as in they're very valuable. They're very expensive. They're very costly. Those are the synonyms you can find for precious even in the dictionary if you may want to go ahead and Google it. These are the kind of thoughts God has for you. My friend, it's okay if nobody is thinking of you. You know, humanly, they have their own life. They have their own things to mind, be mindful of. But the Lord you and I have is mindful of us. And he's got precious thoughts. He's got precious thoughts for you and me. If David can write this in his agony, my friend, we can receive that as well. We know today that we have a God who's got precious thoughts for us. He is mindful of us. He is thinking about us. And he is always having precious thoughts for us. With that note, shall we move to Isaiah 55, 7. And you know what it says in Isaiah 55, 7 till 9? I'm going to read that for you. It says, the end of... Verse 7, he says, for he will abundantly pardon. And then verse 8, he says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. The Lord says it and Isaiah is writing this down. And he says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. You know, every time we read this verse in the past, at least me, I read it with trembling. I read I read it with a lot of fear within me because I come to the Lord with a lot of thoughts and ideas and plans for my life. And the minute I read this, you know, everything would just break down and say, oh, maybe the Lord is not approving my plans. The Lord is probably not, you know, he is not okay with me. He's just saying, you know, follow me is exactly what God is saying to me. You know, we are all caught up with God's voice being very, very bold and, you know, fearful. Uh, we being fearful to that voice. But today, let me read to you with another tone. You know, why would I say that? The beginning, the previous verse, uh, it says, he says, for he will abundantly pardon, which means there's a forgiveness tone. And... After this verse, after the 7th, 8th and ninth verse, well, let's come to the 12th verse. It says, for you will go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Which means this, the Lord is saying with a very joyful and with a very hopeful tone to us. So shall we read that with that very note here? The Lord says, for my thoughts, my child, is not your thoughts, nor your ways. My ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours and my thoughts than your thoughts. You know, the beauty of this verse is when the Lord says, my child, you may be thinking for a thousand rupees, but I am planning for a lakh for you. My child, you may be looking for a rented house, but I am planning for an own, you know, house for you. These are the kinds, this is the way the Lord is saying, you know, you may be, your thoughts may be very little, but my thoughts are as higher as heaven for you, my child. You know, with this, when we read this, with this stone, we understand that the Lord has higher thoughts. The first time we saw the Lord has 
precious thoughts for us. And in this verse, we, we understand that the Lord has higher thoughts for us. Who says that there is nobody thinking about you? My friend, today the word says that the Lord is mindful. The Lord is thoughtful. The Lord is thinking about you. And the kind of thoughts that he has for you are precious and higher precious and higher come on place your hand on your chest and say lord your plans for me are precious and higher precious and higher come on receive that for yourself and for your family for your children this is true this is what the word says and so you can boldly receive it with a lot of faith and hope and believe that the lord has precious and higher thoughts for you. He's not just thinking about you. He's not just mindful somewhere in the corner of his mind, but he is full of mind. He is mindful of you and he has precious and higher thoughts for you and for me. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that amazing? We have a God who is mindful. We don't have to go in search of him. We didn't have to run behind him. We didn't have to climb mountains. We didn't have to walk miles around. But the Lord came in search of us and he is mindful of us. Let me also tell you, my friend, when Adam failed, you know, the Lord could have simply banished the earth and he could have gone to another galaxy making another earth making some meaningful and sensible people but the lord came down he knew adam needs god god knew the plans that he had for adam he didn't you know change his mind because adam failed he came down he made plans for Adam and Eve and he came down for Adam when Adam failed God was still thinking about Adam and after Adam there were generations that forgot God can you believe that there were generations they didn't even speak about God until Seth you know that is so painful but God was still thinking about people about us and after that, when Hebrews were crying out, being slaves, you know, they didn't have a deliverance. They were being treated. They were being ill-treated. They, they didn't have a place to go. There was no rescue. There was no escape from their slavery. They were crying. But, you know, in all those years, in all those years, they didn't call upon the God. But even before their groaning reached the throne. The Lord had already planned the birth of Moses. You know, the Lord is mindful of his people, even when people were not thinking about him. That is the kind of God we serve. Yes. You know, and then he sends forth Moses and delivers those, delivers his people who were in slavery. And after that, when people again kept forgetting God, they rebelled and they were against God. They just moved away from the belief and faith on God. They went behind idolatry. The Lord sends judges because he is thinking about them. And afterwards, you know, when people again rebelled and they were like going after other people and other gods and other kings, the Lord sends kings. Even while it is the Lord who is fighting the battle, the Lord still chooses kings for his people. And after that, you know, when people again kept forgetting God, they keep forgetting God, they keep, you know, the entire Bible, you read the Old Testament, it is about how people keep forgetting God and how God is behind them. He sends prophets, he sends his word, he sends his man of God, he sends messengers to keep reminding that God is thinking and mindful about his people. You know, this is, is, this is exactly what the word says. And God kept sending prophets. God kept sending his, his men to speak the word, to speak repentance, to speak forgiveness. What does that mean? That means God had not forgotten. He was thoughtful. He was mindful of his people. And you know, the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 4, verse 6. Let's move to that. You know, the last chapter, God says, about the last days, the great day of the Lord where the wrath comes down. And before that, the Lord says, I'm going to send a prophet. I'm going to send Elijah. 
and before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord, the last verse, here I read it for you. He says, he will restore the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers so that I will not come and smite the land with a curse. You know, the, in the original, when I read it, it said, where it says fathers, it says ab, which is abba otherwise. It, it is in singular. You know, the Lord here, he is saying, even in the Old Testament, while he showed himself as God, but his heart always longed for his people to call him as father, as a daddy, as Abba. And he says, I will turn the heart of Abba to the children and the children's heart to Abba. And that is exactly what Jesus did. When Jesus came, he taught us the prayer and he says, Our Father, our Father who art in heaven. Yes, my friend, Jesus came to restore our relationship with God. Before we get into that, you know, this was after this was Malachi. There was a 400 years of silence, 400 years of gap between the Old Testament and the writing of New Testament. The, those 400 years, God did not send a prophet. God did not speak a word to, to the people. Neither did people ask of God. But all those 400 years, my friend, God was thinking about his people. God was thinking about his people. If not, Jesus couldn't have come for us because Jesus will not do anything the father doesn't say and Jesus knew exactly what his father's heart longed for his father's heart the our father's heart longed for us for his people for his children that is none other than you and me the, the heart of the father longed for us he was always thinking about us he was always thinking about us. My friend, let me, let me say this to you. I don't have a better story than this. You know, when Adam fell and God planned the rescue of the mankind, God was thinking about you and me. God was thinking about you and me. When he planned Jesus to be, to send Jesus to rescue the manhood, he was mindful of us. And when Jesus came to earth, he was mindful of us. He was thinking about us. He was thinking about us. And when Jesus came on earth, when he was walking on the earth among the people, doing miracles, preaching the word of God, preaching the kingdom, the, Jesus was mindful of us. He was thinking about us. He was thinking about us. And you know, when Jesus was betrayed by his own friend, he was thinking about us. When Peter, you know, rejected, ignored, and refused to know Jesus, Jesus was still thinking about us. And when Jesus was looking for his disciples, and disciples had already ran away for their lives, Jesus was still thinking about the disciples and us. He was thinking about you and me. When Jesus was beaten, every strike, every smack, every whip, he was thinking about you and me. And when he was stripped naked, you know, the God of heaven and earth, the God of glory, he was embraced, he was surrounded by glory. But when he was stripped naked, my friend, he was thinking about you and me. He was thinking about the nakedness of us, but he wanted to give us the garment of righteousness. So he did not mind standing naked for you and me. Why? Because he was thinking about you and me. And when there was this crown of thorns that was placed on his head and that pierced through his skin and his nerve through his forehead he was thinking about you and me and when he was taken to the emperor he had this robe on him and when they just stripped it off you know the skin came off along with the robe you know his skin was stripped off as well and that very moment my friend Jesus was thinking about you and me and when he was walking with all of the, those pain, and when, he, when they took him to be beaten again, when all those, uh, you know, when, when, it was, when they, the Romans were beating him, and when all his, the pieces of his flesh were scattering around all across the place that he was, 
Jesus was thinking about you and me. When he was dripping all of his blood off on the earth, he was thinking about you and me. With all of that flesh being so open and wounded and all those mud over his flesh. And when he was walking to the Golgotha with the cross on his shoulder, he was bearing all of that for you and me. And on the cross, while going before, before to the cross, when they were nailing on his hands and his legs, when those, new, when those nails just pierced through his hands and legs, he was thinking about you and me. And when he was on the cross, my friend, when he was dripping his blood off from his body, drop by drop, every drop to the final drop, he was thinking about you and me. And when they pierced through his side and when there was blood and water that flew through, you know, he was thinking about you and me. When he was in the tomb for three days, he was thinking about you and me. And when he rose back again, my friend, that was for us to be righteous. And then he was still thinking about you and me. Now let me ask you, what makes you think that there is nobody to think about you? What makes you think there is nobody who is mindful of you? My friend, that is a lie from the devil. The truth is that the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth is mindful of you and me. He is thoughtful of you and me. He's got precious and high your thoughts. Jess, let's come back to the beginning of the message. Like David says, how precious are your thoughts for me, Jesus? How precious are your thoughts unto me? If I could count them all, they would outnumber the sand. You know, can you ever number a handful of sand? It is so difficult. It's close to impossible. You know, there will be days pass by. Your days of your lifetime pass by just counting the, the, the number of sands in the, just in the palm of your hand. The, the little sand that you can gather in the palm of your hand. But David says, Lord, how precious are your thoughts that you have for me. If I have to count the sum of them all, they would outnumber the sand. You know, David is being anointed while he's saying this, I believe, because he's speaking of days before he could even live. So I believe these were the words of Holy Spirit. And today, Holy Spirit is reminding of us that the Lord, God, Father, and Jesus have so many precious thoughts for us outnumbering the number of sands my friend don't you ever believe the lie of devil that says there is nobody to think of you we have a God who is mindful who is thinking about us and he's got precious thoughts for us for our lives and while as we read in Isaiah, Isaiah, we, we saw the Lord says as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my thoughts for you so are my ways for you so with this we know the lord has higher thoughts for us see the lord is thoughtful about us he is mindful about us and the kind of thoughts that he's got for us is precious and higher precious and higher can we say that again can we receive that for our life and say lord for all that you did, for all that you did on the cross, for all that you went through for me, I believe that you have precious and higher thoughts for my life, for my life. My friend, imagine everything. Think about all that Jesus went through. He didn't go through it just to fulfill what was spoken, but he went through all of that because he was thinking about us. He loves us. He loves you and me. You are never alone. Jesus, who gave his life for you, has there anybody who could give love, who can give life for us? If a man gives life for a woman, it's called love. Has a woman ever given life for a man? That's a good question. But if God, the darling of heaven, coming down for us and dying, living a life so perfect that we could not and dying on behalf of us and rose again for us, my friend. I think this is love. This is the purest form of love. And you have a lover of a soul. You have someone so great to love you, to be mindful of you, to be thoughtful of you. And he has you on his thoughts. Never believe the lie that says, there is nobody to think about me. I wish they thought. I wish they thought. 
let the wishes go and believe the truth that you have a father who, who is mindful of you. You have Jesus who gave us life thinking about you. And you have the Holy Spirit within you, around you, working for you 24-7, 365 days to make life better because he is mindful of you. You have a God who thinks and in whose thoughts you are, my friend. I want to finish this with a story where there was a father who went far away to work and to provide for his family. Back in those days, there were no phones or there were no uh, modes of communication apart from these letters as we know. And the father kept writing letters and he never heard back. And then later he got to know there was, a, there was a famine, there was a flood which washed away his home. So there was no whereabouts about his wife and his daughter. And while here, you know, since there was flood and, you know, this child, this girl daughter lost her mother and she was in a foster care. And years passed by, years passed by, the father kept looking for the child and the daughter didn't know much about anything so she couldn't search very much for her father she was in the foster care years passed by they grew she grew and when she grew up she kind of thought why don't I go back to my place and look for something if I could find about my mom and dad though she knew her mother had passed away she was still in she was still longing for her father thinking would he ever think about me would he ever th- had thought about me so she goes back to her place in search of she kind of had a vague memory of where she comes from she took she went she she spoke to the officials she asked for the place she was bought from and she went back to her place there you know she uh, she met the officials and they were like yeah yeah I kind of remember you know there was this man who used to come asking for his daughter all the time you know but we didn't have your whereabouts so we couldn't tell your father I, I we think that is your father she was so excited she was so happy that finally she could meet her father so she went in search and they gave her an address she went to that house and when she looked alas the father was no longer there but you know the house was written she went inside the house she looked for everything everything she had longed for from her childhood every doll everything you know at every stage the father had bought it for her she went she opened the drawer she was just going around the house she she opened the cupboard she opened the drawer there were these letters that he wrote for his daughter when she read them all one by one she was cheering down because she didn't she always thought will my will my dad ever think of me will he ever come for me you know this is the kind of thought she had but when she read these letters you know she was tearing down she was feeling so bad for having these thoughts about her dad and you know when she she was just walking around the house she was seeing the immense house the father had built for his daughter she came she came out and she she read the nameplate on the nameplate there was the stone nameplate and upon that he's written thinking of my daughter and he'd written his daughter's name it's now beautiful isn't that beautiful she was so overwhelmed over the years all the pain that she had over the years was healed the moment she saw that board that said thinking of you and the daughter's name right there you know my friend this is exactly what would happen to us I believe after knowing the thoughts God has for us my friend God is mindful just like this father was thinking about his daughter and had all those things that the daughter needed he had already bought and kept it in his house and had made a beautiful house and a mansion for his daughter today we have a daddy God the daddy God who has amazing thoughts for us and today he is saying he has immense blessings for us every blessing every promise every memory is written down in this beautiful book and you know the entire Bible is about how he keeps thinking about his people When people keep forgetting and running away, he sends forth his prophets and men 
sending forth words saying come on come back to me come back to me come back to me the reason being he was always thinking about us and today my friend god is saying my daughter my son i am thinking of you i am thinking of you you are in my thoughts you are in my thoughts never ever think there is nobody to think of think about you i know these things these emotions would come sometimes when we are going through loneliness when things are frustrating but hold on to the truth the truth is this that you and i have a god who is the maker of heaven and earth and he is thoughtful he is mindful of you and me and in his thoughts you are in his thoughts you are can i ask you to place your hand on your heart and take it into your heart and say this lord in your thoughts i am come on say it lord in your thoughts i am lord in your thoughts i am come on let the lord be pleased listening to it lord in your thoughts i am and also let the enemy be scared that you know the truths today that you are in the thoughts of the very lord and let the enemy be afraid that you have come to knowing the truth that the lord is mindful of you come on say that lord in your thoughts i am lord in your thoughts i am yes yes my friend you and i are very much in his thoughts amen amen shall we give the lord an amazing clap offering the best clap offering possible yes he deserves it he deserves it he deserves it with this shall we all close our eyes and raise our hands to the father who is mindful and who is thoughtful about us shall we say lord thank you so much for having me in your thoughts and thank you so much that you have precious and higher thoughts about me lord when people when my dad was not mindful when my mother left me lord in the, in a kind of life where my husband is not very you know fond of me when where my wife doesn't think about me when my brother is so far away he doesn't come to me lord my friends who betrayed me lord i do not care if anybody is ever thinking of me because today i know that you my god are thinking of me in your thoughts i am in your thoughts i am yes in your thoughts we are thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you for this amazing amazing thought that you have put in our hearts today this truth will set us free from every bondage of loneliness and depression because knowing the very truth that you are thinking about us and we have a father who loves us we have a father who is thinking about us we have a father who has precious and higher thoughts for our lives will deliver each one of us from the loneliness and depression that every child is fighting today and we speak and receive the deliverance today lord we thank you jesus we thank you oh jesus we thank you we thank you we thank you lord we thank you we bless your name we thank you thank you jesus hallelujah what an amazing word of grace and favor yes god has new beginnings God has wonderful things God has favor in your future He is a good God He is faithful I invite you to take up the bread and the wine in your hand This is a holy moment Come on this is a moment of Passover God is here the Holy Spirit is here I want you to lift up the body of the Lord in your hand repeat after me say Lord Jesus for by your stripes I am healed For by your wounds I am made whole. No more sicknesses or diseases. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. Receive the body of the Lord in faith. Lift up the cup. declare with me say lord jesus for by your blood i am made righteous for by your blood i am made worthy my future is secure my family is safe and my life is blessed all by the blood of jesus 
receive his blood for you thank you jesus I want you to raise your hands and give him a praise offering at this moment he's a good god the one who spoke the word is faithful to fulfill it thank you jesus thank you heavenly father let us pray heavenly father we thank you we praise you for this amazing opportunity you gave us today lord we receive the word we worship you we honor you for who you are lord we believe that every promise that you've spoken will come to pass in our lives your goodness will overwhelm us and your favor will cover us lord and you will protect us and take us further take us further into whatever you have for us in 2022 lord each family that joined us today bless them with your goodness lord may your name be glorified and magnified thank you for your grace and your favor in jesus name we pray the people of god said amen lift up your hands receive the blessing may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face shine upon you and give you grace may the lord lift up his countenance over you and bless you with shalom peace all the days of your life in jesus name hallelujah come on he deserves the praise he deserves the glory I want you to know that God is with you. God is going ahead of you and he's making clearer paths for your destiny. He cares for you and your children and your family. And I want you to know that God is always for you and a mega shift is coming your way. And until we meet you again with another amazing message on another Sunday, I want you to remember that God is on the throne. He's working on your behalf and we are praying for you. God bless you.